Raging Cajuns' Kobe Julian hits a transfer portal. It's Locked On Sunbelt. You are Locked On Sunbelt, your daily podcast on the Sunbelt Conference, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, Dave Schultz, Locked On Sunbelt, your team every day. Today's episode brought to you by Nissan. Are you the kind of driver that likes to push things a little further? Ever wonder what adventure could be around the next corner? Take the Nissan Rogue, Nissan Pathfinder, or Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. Check them all out today at NissanUSA.com. All right, Dave Schultz, uh, back with another edition of Locked On Sunbelt. Really appreciate the patience. Uh, Extremely late today. Again, just not feeling, I get, I get something that happens at night and then in the morning, and I've been going back and forth for about 45 minutes with uh, Cajuns fans. So I, uh, sorry for the uh, delay. Uh, we'll talk about Kobe Julian and others going to the portal. Uh, how can the Sun Belt compete? They have issues with the coaches. Uh, and then Sun Belt uh, baseball preview. On a side note, this is like my second favorite time of the year. Right. It used to be my favorite time of the year. I was a baseball guy. Um, and then the second, the other time is September when you have uh, baseball pennant races and college and pro football are starting. But today, today, Thursday, today. All right. We have college baseball. So here in Louisiana, we'll have Cajuns are taking on Texas State. LSU is playing Arkansas. Right. So everybody has that. Uh, the Pelicans are playing today. We have. Um, Major League Baseball opening day is today, and we have the Sweet 16. Like today, Thursday the 28th, maybe the best sports day of the year, period, end of story. I mean, that's going to be tough to beat this. So the other part of it is uh, would be the Masters is coming up, but that's not today. But you got the Major League Baseball and the NCAA tournament on the same day. It's awesome. Plus uh, college baseball and, uh, and, and pro basketball. Uh, all right, so uh, Kobe Julian had hit it. Uh, Last night that he is entering in the portal, uh, I could sit here and tell you I had a source close uh, to Kobe that he was staying, uh, but I will just tell you it was Kobe. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to dance around it coming out of uh, Cajun Spring Ball that, that Jim is connected to uh, the indoor facility here in, in uh, Lafayette and went up to him because I'd heard he had another year of eligibility, which would be forever. And... Uh, said, are you coming back? You have another year? And he goes, yeah. I'm like, well, they're going to call you Co- Dr. Julian because you're going to get like a PhD or something like that. And he's like, well, what about Dr. J? I go, well, that's taken. As I Then you realize, oh, even the Kobe thing is kind of taken. So that was last week. He's in the portal this week. We'll, we'll see where he goes. He's a Baton Rouge kid. So, you know, obviously he's maybe thinking LSU. Again, averaging 17 and 7 or so in the – Sunbelt is one thing. Doing it in the SEC is quite another. He could come off the bench. I just think they're probably more um, athletic. But we'll see. LSU got better uh, during the season. We'll see if he, if that's where he ends up. I don't know. Could he get some NIL money at LSU? I have no idea. I'm sure LSU's NIL money could be spoken for. I mean, this portal thing just opened up this week, last week. Yeah, just opened up. Uh, so we shall see. Uh, JMU is losing more people. App State has like three quarters of the team. So this is an issue. We got to we got to work this out. And I did see something. I think it was football. Like most of the Power Five football players that went into the transfer portal ended up somewhere else. I'm not so sure if that's the case for Group of Five football players or Group of Five basketball players. And you know, so when a um, a Themis goes into the portal. He went into the portal last year. Somehow it didn't work out. He came right back out. I don't think that's going to happen this year. I think he's going to try and find a new place to go. Joe Charles, hometown kid, he could find a new place to go. I don't. I don't know where. Right. I'm not sure where. Is he? He's not a. I mean, he almost averaged a double double. The problem with Joe is he's not. He's got a funky shot, so it's not. The most consistent thing. So one night he'll get you, you know, 16 and 10. And then the next game, it's like, you know, six points, but still grabbing a bunch of rebounds and maybe a block or two and some steals. So he's a really good all around player, just not very consistent. So I'm not sure if that's going to translate to the SEC. Could he go to McNeese or Nichols? Yeah. 
yeah, that'll work. Uh, and Kobe Julian obviously may be able to pick where he wants to go. Uh, but again, they all saw what happened to Jordan Brown. I mean, you don't have to be, you know, if you're going into the portal, hey, be careful, right? You're welcome to go, but go talk to Jordan about what happened in the portal. All right. Just making sure that you're not making this decision out of haste or rushing the decision. So we'll see. I still have to think that Joe Charles is coming back. That could be a me thing. That could absolutely be a me thing. I presume Kobe is testing the waters, but he could go. He's, well, he's better. <laughs> you know, that he's a better player than Joe. So he may have more options. Um, so we'll, we'll see. But I mean, you got a, a bunch of players going in. Howell Razor hasn't, Jeremy Harper has not updated the, his list. Let's go Harper. You're, you're, you know, screwing around. Uh, so he doesn't have it, it, it it's been 10 days already i guess so it's been opened a bunch i guess he did this oh no it officially opened march 18th so maybe he has opened it up app state maybe he did update it maybe he is updating it okay my bad i apologize jeremy because he's got one two three four five six seven eight players from app state in there including Jordan Marsh, the freshman point guard, Justin Apps in the center, and Trayvon Spillers, the forward. Again, some of these stats are not the most impressive because that's what made App State so good, right? Trayvon Spillers, 13 points, nine rebounds. That's nice. I don't know where it's going to translate from. Justin Apps in eight points, seven rebounds, plus you forget the blocks, right? Uh, but Xavier Brown went in uh, the transfer portal. I mean, you got... Terrence Harcum is in the transfer portal, 12 points a game. I mean, you got almost everybody in the portal, right? And we'll see who comes back, right? You can go in and come back if that's the case. Uh, you got a couple of guys from Arkansas State that didn't look to be part of the rotation, at least this year. Um, Coastal Carolina, one, two, three, four, five in there. Georgia State has lost a good chunk. Georgia Southern has lost some guys. Uh, we had the JMU, Terrence Edwards. Jalen Carey in there. Then Horton went in there and Justin Amati, who hasn't played uh, last year, but it was a three-year starter. He ended up going. All right. And he does have Kobe Julian on the list. So this has been updated. My bad. I, it is tra it is dated 318, but he has updated. So again, my apologies, Jeremy. So you do have a bunch of these guys and it is a year to year thing. Old Dominion is bringing in a new coach. Nashawn Alette is in there. Chauncey Jenkins is in there. Texas State, a bunch of guys. So this is, it really is, you can't build the team anymore. Not in, not in group of five college basketball. You are coaching year to year. And that's why maybe, you know, it takes a little bit for these, these teams to figure out what they are, right? We don't know what they are. They don't know what they are in November. That was kind of the case for the Cajuns, right? They started out slow and then they ended up winning those eight games in a row before they finished up. Not great. But they didn't know what they were. And I do think it takes, you know, 12, 10 to 12 ball games, you know, a third of the schedule to figure uh, that out. So what they are in November and December could be very different between uh, January and February. Now you have the veteran teams like App was and like JMU was coming into the season. And you kind of know. And then JMU beat Michigan State and Kent State right off the bat. So they kind of knew, hey, we're pretty good. and we need to act like it and approach these games like we are the better team in every single account. And they only lost to App State twice and Southern Miss. All right, let's take a timeout. When we come back, how can the Sun Belt compete? Because not only are they losing players, but they are losing coaches and may lose coaches to other power, to other group of five conferences. We will do that when we come back. Let me tell you, let me make sure here. Let me tell you about Nissan and Better Together. Whoops. Sorry, still. Dealing with uh, congestion. This week's March Madness Bracket Highlight is brought to you by our friends at Nissan. Each week, we're picking one team that stands out, a team that's pushed it further than the rest, 
just like any of the all-new 2024 Nissan SUVs. These guys were able to take it to the next level. Now, Iowa State Cyclones can only be described as a pathfinder. They've been thrilling to watch and have really created a lane for themselves entering the tournament as one of the hottest teams in the country. They have a date with Illinois today in uh, the Sweet 16. Take the Nissan Rogue, Nissan Pathfinder, or Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. Shop NissanUSA.com. And whoops, better together. Brackets busted already. Tired of the same old daily fantasy grind where you make a roster, cross your fingers and hope for the best, or losing on the last leg of your pick em entry, introducing better together. The first cooperative daily fantasy platform where teamwork triumphs talent and you can play with your friends, not against them. Pick more or less on real-time player stats, strategize with your partner to boost your odds, and climb the leaderboard together. So grab a friend and join the social DFS movement. Download Better Together from the App Store and sign up using promo code Locked On for a chance to win your share of over $1,000 in cash and prizes. Remember the code Locked On because winning alone is fun, but it's better together. All right, Dave Schultz, Locked On Sunbelt, your team every day. We'll do the Sunbelt Baseball Preview in the last segment. Big, big series, Cajuns and Texas State among them uh, this holiday uh, weekend. All right, so uh, yesterday and today, I think they officially announced it. Um, yesterday came out that Pat Kelsey from College of Charleston was going to Louisville. All right, kind of felt, I kind of dissed that whole thing. That me, that's a me problem. I, I'll admit that. Uh, good coach has taken Winthrop and College of Charleston to the NCAA tournament. So he's won multiple group of five uh, tournament championships. Uh, hasn't won an NCAA ball game yet, but he's been there multiple times. Okay. And I think they won 31 games this year. Uh, and then as soon as that started happening, they mentioned Dustin Kearns from App State as a possibility. Uh, to replace Kelsey at Charleston. And I was like, well, why, 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 why is that? What's, what's going on here? Why is, why is the College of Charleston better than App State? And then I found out. All right. Well, first of all, they don't have any football, which I don't think makes it a better place. So the NIL money, how much NIL money are they getting to begin with at the College of Charleston? What, I mean, I'm, are, they, are they giving up six figures? You know, I, I'd love to know how much, you know, is like, but the Cajuns getting NIL money football-wise, how much money are they possibly getting? I don't know. I have no idea. Baseball, softball. I thought it would be better for softball in the women's sports, but I don't know how much anybody's getting right now. And so here's the difference with College of Charleston. I, I like the idea of having football program. First of all, there's more money in the program. And you can sometimes you can hide behind the football. All right. As I said on Schultz cast, places like Michigan formerly Alabama with Saban there. And, you know, the best example of that is Billy Donovan at Florida could have stayed forever, right? He's coaching basketball with Steve Spurrier coaching football back in the, well, maybe Spurrier was already gone, but anyway, there could, you know, he's, he's winning basketball games when they're worried about Florida. Maybe that was with, uh, yeah, maybe that was with somebody else. He's winning um, uh, basketball championships when really they only care about football there. So you can hide behind football a little bit. Now with no football, you can't hide at Carl's Charleston. That's the whole thing is the baseball or is the, is the basketball. Well, the other difference is I found this out. Like Dustin Kearns got a raise in a contract extension a couple of years ago, like in 21 to like $325,000. And Sean Clark is only making like 425, right? I mean, that's a lot of money to the rest of us. But when you're talking head coaches, group of five, and certainly at power fives, it's not. And apparently Kelsey was making like 1.1 million. I don't know if you start Dustin Kearns or the new coach off at 1.1 million, but what if it's 750? What if it's a million? Right? Uh, and and Dustin Kearns is going from I think he makes like 325 or 350. Right over five years, that's not that much compared to one million. And and so the Sun Belt's going to have to figure this out to keep their coaches. Um, you know, John Summerall went from Troy to Tulane. I didn't think he, he would, 
Tulane seems to be all in. Uh, athletics wise, part of that is you know, Tulane's pricey school, right? They're getting, if you go to Tulane and are paying, we'll just say cash to go there, right? That's probably going to cost you 300 grand to go to Tulane for four years. Right. I mean, I think it's like $70,000 a year. You know, and you know, I don't know if you're on campus in your, you know, soft or your junior or senior years, but it's a lot of money. You're spending about 300 grand. So Tulane has figured out, you know, like the rest of us, we can get some better exposure if we have a higher profile coach and do a little bit of uh, promoting through our athletic department. Uh, and obviously Tulane, you know, Tulane's in New Orleans, right? Compared to Troy is a really small uh, college football town. Like, I think that's it. There's nothing, you know, I think they had some, did I read they had some like missile contractor out, outside of town, but there's not a whole lot in Troy. And obviously New Orleans, to be honest with you, there's not a whole lot in New Orleans business-wise. It's all um, hospitality. They got the casino, but that's more about hospitality than anything else. There's no corporate offices, not a whole lot of them anyways in New Orleans. But nonetheless, it's a major league city, right? You got uh, you got the Saints, you got the Pelicans, LSU is right up the road. So there's plenty of money around for Tulane compared to Troy. Uh, and so what, you know, how do you keep these coaches? Because somewhere along the way, the Sun Belt has to figure it out. They also have to figure out on how to do some scheduling. Because we were talking about this. I was talking this with the Cajuns beat writer, Kevin Foote. You know, on he brought it up in baseball. You know, if you beat, so the Cajuns um, beat Grambling 12 to 4. Uh, it's not a great schedule. They actually went down one, which isn't bad in the in the Warren Nolan RPI rankings. They went down one for playing a team like it was a schedule like 269 or something like that. And so he was like, well, the Big 12, that was a whole thing. The Big 12 in basketball figured out the net rankings, right? They figured out the net. We're going to crush some of these lesser programs. And so your offensive rankings go up, your defensive rankings go up. And so then when you get into the Big 12, there's not really a bad loss. Well, that doesn't really work for the, the Sun Belt in basketball because you can crush little guys, but there's no, you're not, you're playing each other. So that's not helping, whereas everybody else in the big, big 12 is ranked. But he mentioned in baseball, it should help, right? Like if you beat Grambling six to four, that's not great, but you just beat them 12 to four. So if you do blow these teams out like you should, right? And baseball is not really meant to be that way, but it does happen. Uh, you should get credit for it. If you lose, then it's a problem. Right. And the Cajuns have some, I'm sure some other teams do, but the Cajuns don't do, do not have the strongest schedule. Uh, they need to win a bunch, uh, especially during the week, right? Whereas, good, did you go look at LSU's schedule? I mean, it's Florida last week, Arkansas this week. I think Missouri is coming up. All right. So that's a one off. But I think, I mean, they just got a brutal schedule for, <laughs> for college baseball. Whereas the Cajuns, you know, they have this huge series against Texas State, but then Marshall and ULM, they then play Marshall and ULM. Well, that's not great. That's not going to help their RPI. It's tough to, you can't, it's tough to, you certainly can't lose the series. And baseball is not meant to be swept. It's meant to be won the series. Their better ball games are actually playing Southeastern in the midweek. They have a top 100 RPI, right? They're not playing a good RPI team. Uh, Texas State is 75 or so. Until after Texas State, until Coastal. And we'll see where Coastal is at that point in time. Coastal, what did I say, 25? Th th something like that. Coastal is fine. Uh, so somehow, the, the not only the Cajuns, but the Sun Belt has to figure out how to compete and keep some of their coaches. They got to invest. And it is just money, 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 money. It is all about the money, right? The NFL playing on a Friday night. In Brazil, the NFL playing on Christmas. It, it's just all about the money and what people have done over the last, I mean, it's been forever, but now it's, they don't even, they don't even hide it anymore. It's just all about the money and the people who have it, the power fives do not want to give it to the group of fives. That's why Greg Sankey comes out in the NCAA tournament and says, we got to check out some of these 
uh, automatic berths to these conferences that are getting them that are taking up spots that we should get. And then the SEC lays an egg in the SEC tournament or in the uh, NCAA tournament. You know? uh, so I don't know how they compete. It's just all about the money. Uh, all right, let's check out some of the Sun Belt baseball when we come back. Again, mentioned Cajuns taking on Texas State. We'll go over that. Uh, when we come back, let me tell you about Amazon TV. Fire TV is your destination for sports, from live games to highlights to in-depth analysis. Fire TV offers amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs, as well as the Fire Stick that you can plug into your existing TV that provides access to millions of movies and TV episodes, as well as free and live TV. Whether it's going to opening weekend for baseball or the college basketball tournament, you're going to want to have a Fire TV. Fire TV recently created Fire TV channels to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands, all for free. That includes all of us at Locked On and most of the big pro leagues and college conferences as well. Fire TV channels let you dive into all the game analysis, highlights, and more to keep up on all the latest in the world of sports. World of sports. March Madness, NBA, and Major League Baseball, and lots more. Not to mention great news, entertainment, gaming, travel, cooking videos as well. Check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. If you haven't checked out Fire TV channels, you should trust me on this. To learn more, visit www.amazon.com. Slash locked on fire TV. Dave Schultz, locked on Sunbelt, your team every day. Let's go over the Sunbelt uh, baseball action uh, today and this, this weekend. Remember, it is a Thursday, Friday, Saturday due to Easter. Uh, App State and Marshall playing uh, early. I'm presuming that's 4 p.m. Uh, Eastern time. Uh, in lovely Boone, North Carolina. Uh, so we'll see if App State can continue. They're, they moved up a little bit in the uh, in the Warren Nolan dot uh, com rankings. Uh, big series, Jay Madison and uh, Georgia State. You know, if we check out the standings, we'll do that in a second. So Georgia State hosting James Madison, Old Dominion. They were playing really well until they came to Lafayette, got swept. South Alabama was not playing well, and they had a good series last weekend. Uh, they're playing better. Uh, and then you got the Cajuns in Texas State. Huge series in San Marcos. Uh, we'll check out the standings in a second. Can Southern Miss bounce back? They get Troy. That's the other big series. You do have some good series. James Madison and Georgia State. South Alabama and Old Dominion are looking to move up in the standings. You got Cajuns in Texas State. Troy and Southern Miss. That's huge. Uh, Georgia Southern taking on Arkansas State. Can Georgia Southern stay hot? And Coastal coming to Monroe to take on ULM. All right, checking out the standings. So we knew the Cajuns are up top five to one. See, Georgia State is five and one. Southern Miss and Texas State are four and two. Coastal is three and three, right? They almost got swept by App State. Very well could have gotten swept by App State. Probably very well should have gotten swept by App State, but they did survive that crazy Sunday night baseball game. Uh, App State is three and three. Troy three and three. Georgia Southern three and three. On the bottom, James Madison, South Alabama, Arkansas State, Old Dominion, ULM, Marshall, all two and four. So there is a uh, a big opportunity for you know South Alabama or Old Dominion. They're playing each other. You know, can James Madison? you know, do something against Georgia State. That's a big series for both the Panthers and James Madison. James Madison has a great RPI, but only 15 and 10 overall. Uh, as we, we've been talking about it, Cajuns on an eight-game winning streak. Uh, let's see if they can continue it, right? It's much easier to win a series if you win on Friday. Then you got a couple of chances. And again, it'll be Andrew Herman and... Uh, I'm presuming LP Langevin following him um, did talk with Blake Marshall after the game on Tuesday and he had gone four innings. So he's like, yeah, give me a couple of days. I should be fine. So that's Wednesday, Thursday. So probably not today, but he think he'll be available at least for a little bit, either Friday or Saturday, probably more about Saturday. So we'll see if, if that's the case. Uh, as well, he had a, an outstanding outing uh, with the uh, uh, setting a career high in six strikeouts in four innings 
on uh, Tuesday against Grambling. All right, so uh, it's a good uh, baseball weekend. I mean, again, JMU, Georgia State, Troy, and uh, Southern Miss, Cajuns and Texas State, huge. And then maybe, you know, following weekends, I know the Cajuns are taking on Marshall and ULM. So those are very winnable series for the Cajuns. And I think both are at home before they go to Coastal at the end of the month. And so there'll be other series that we'll have to focus on more than the Cajuns and Texas State. And that's coming up. Uh, again, my deepest apologies for being, well, extremely late with uh, Thursday's episode. Again, just wasn't feeling well last night. And, you know, going back and forth, having some fun with uh, the Cajuns fans. Again, they do want a new basketball coach. I don't think that's going to happen. I'm not sure it should happen. They aren't wrong about the attendance. The attendance did really go down this year. It wasn't good when JMU came to town. It wasn't really good for an eight game winning streak At the same time. I don't think they're drawing all that well, baseball wise, but that could be a me thing, right? Um, they only had 700 against scrambling. And it's one thing to draw four or 5,000, which they really haven't this year. Uh, ODU, they didn't draw, you know, they're going to in 25 to 3,000. Maybe they did build the stadium too big. I don't know, but somewhere along the way, it'd be nice, you know, see what happens next week and next weekend for more of a, uh, for more of a crowd if the Cajuns do come back victorious. So it is a thing. We're having fun going back and forth. Also, uh, if you're here in Lafayette or not, really would appreciate it if you subscribe to my YouTube channel on, uh, well, YouTube, Schultzcast, doing a, a daily podcast here uh, locally in Lafayette. Thanks so much. Uh, we'll do another episode on Friday to recap uh, what happened uh, tonight in college baseball and see who else enters the portal or whatever Sunbelt coach. Uh, gets higher. All right. So still lots to do this week. Thanks so much for tuning in. Enjoy your Thursday. Happy opening day. If you celebrate, uh, I'm Dave Schultz and you've been listening and watching the Lockdown Sunbelt, your team every day.